Now, research from the Pew Center indicates that 4 in 10 South Africans, that's about 39%, wouldn't actually mind if they were being spied on by the U.S. Murray, why do you think that this is the case? Traditionally, the right to privacy is, is, is one of the first uh, rights that people are willing to give up because they say, I've got nothing to hide. Um, and, and the real problem is that it's often people who are most vulnerable who are experiencing abuses in the first place. I mean, in, 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 a, in a less democratic society, it might be people on the margins who are uh, uh, activists on the ground or, or, or people who are being treated essentially as, as, as uh, you know, uh, uh, for instance, activists in Syria or Lebanon are, are, are the first people to fall victim to infringements of that of, of privacy, uh, and so many people, unfortunately, are willing to sell away that right very easily. And it's only when uh, it becomes known that, in fact, these abuses are much worse than you could possibly imagine, which is what happened in, in the case of Snowden. Suddenly, uh, everyone is outraged, and so. The, the willingness that we have to give up the right to privacy is often connected to the fact that we don't know how widely it might be infringed on. Now, Mokulani, you have a very interesting perspective on this. Uh, yeah, certainly. Um, we, we live in a country where the majority of the citizens depend on the state for their li livelihoods, uh, for their safety. Uh, you know, and, and so you have this understanding that for me to receive whatever entitlements that I'm, uh, that I'm due to receive from the state. The state needs to know that I exist. And therefore, you have the sense where people say, particularly those that live in informal settlements, who have been living in informal settlements for decades, some of them, where they say, I want my details to be in the database so that government knows that I'm in need of a house. Uh, there was one instance in Durban in one of the cases that we dealt with where the lady was very upset because she had gone to the local municipal offices and had discovered that uh, her name had been removed from the housing waiting list. She was not upset that she wasn't getting the house or getting allocated the house. She was upset that she was removed from the database. So there are certain instances where people say, I want to be in the, in the government database because I want the government to know that I'm here, and if they know that I'm here, then they should be delivering services to me. So I, I could understand that you know, about 60% of the people that were uh, surveyed were not concerned about, about government holding information about them. Especially considering government does give out 16 million grants, there are many, many South Africans who need to be on some type of database. I think that, that where, the, where the differentiation has to be is that when you willingly give up your information to be in, on a database, um, you're, conceding, you know, certain, uh, you're conceding certain rights where you say, fine, I want uh, to be on the database, I want someone to know that I exist so that when there's, uh, for the purposes of accessing a social grant or accessing social housing, which is fine. But I think that when, the, 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 my understanding of this poll is it's talking much more about an intrusive uh, surveillance that, that you didn't agree to, that you didn't know about. Mm -hmm. um, and what we know about RICA, for instance, is that uh, there are some safeguards, you know, you need a judge's warrant in order to get your communication monitored through RICA. Uh, but there isn't enough oversight in the system for us to know how widely RICA is being used, when it's been used, uh, uh, for instance, how often your metadata is being gathered uh, potentially. Um, and so there's a, it, it's, it's, not the, uh, it's not just the matter of being put into a database, but it's the matter of an incredibly intrusive uh, form of, of, of inc an incredible invasion of your privacy that goes far beyond what I think most people imagine. Yeah. Mm. Th that's why the issue of, of purpose is quite important. Mm. When uh, personal data about you is being collected, purpose is critically important. So in the case that I've just given, and what Mary, Mary is speaking about is, a person says, I want to be in the database because I think being in the database will uh, make me accrue or make me enjoy these benefits or entitlements. Mm -hmm. That's why another important piece of legislation that has come out in the last two years in South Africa has been the Protection of Personal Information Act. Uh, uh, we call it the Data Protection Law. And, and the Protection of Personal Information Act speaks exactly on the issue of purpose, where it's clearly stipulated that information, sh when information is collected, it should be for a specific purpose. Any other purpose not related to the reason why it was collected in the first place will be illegal. 
So, you know, Mario's talking about, you know, people say, uh, I want to be in the database because I will get A, B, C. And as long as X, Y, Z is included, then that's a problem because that's not the reason why I gave up my right to privacy in the first place. So it's critically important to be able to know, you know, to, have, to be able to monitor when a government agencies collect information and how they collect that information. I ju just uh, also the flag, obviously, the Protection of Personal Information Act is different from the protection of state information. Yeah. No. We're going <laughs> to get to that. So, so that We're have, going to get to that. The Personal Data Protection Act <laughs> and the State, state Secrecy Bill. Yes, Bill. we'll um, have it known yeah. that Murray Hunter from Right to Know <laughs> yeah. wants us all to know that the mm. protection of state information is something entirely yeah. different. Totally. But, but I, I think that it does raise this uh, uh, an issue which um, I'm personally still grappling with around uh, central databases sort of citizen information, which is different from communication surveillance and things like that, where um, for, the for, for the purposes of social services, pe large millions of people's data is being kept in databases. Um, but there are concerns around the idea that those databases might be centralized more yeah. and more and mi might be used for different purposes. So for example, uh, your social services, for the education system, for the health system, uh, uh, you know, and, and potentially for other uses as well. And that has great, it has great benefits uh, for the state in terms of centralizing its own services and making it more efficient, but it contains great risks as well for citizens. For instance, uh, if you have everyone's data in one single database, uh, if that database is compromised, then that's 16 million people. Uh, and, and so there, are, there is a debate that needs to happen around that, which I'm not sure that we're there yet either.